Rouse's is proud of the creativity and the unparalleled entertainment in New Orleans and honored to highlight it with their sponsorship of Steppin' Out on WYES. Steppin' Out is made possible in part by Susie and Pierre G. Villery. With a lifetime of passion for public television, we're pleased to help underwrite Steppin' Out. Please join us in supporting WYES-TV. board and welcome to Step It Out with updates from the local restaurant, arts, and entertainment scenes. Joining me, Poppy Tooker, host of Louisiana Eats on WWNO Radio. Hey, Miss Poppy. Hello, how are you? Miss Peck. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi there. Making his Step It Out debut, Anwar Bazir, executive director of the Louisiana Philharmonic Orchestra, with, of course, the Orpheum in the background. Hello. Hello. Thank there. you for Hi. having me. Hi. And Nick Stillman, executive director of Prospect New Orleans, now five, a citywide contemporary art triennial. It's amazing this is the fifth one. Welcome, and we look forward to hearing an overview of that. Welcome, Nick. And Alex Mason, and speaking of, there's the singer <laughs> of a of course, criticism, theatercriticism.com, and the Crescent City Jewish News. Welcome to you all. Poppy, time to make reservations. <laughs> time to talk turkey, Peggy. <laughs> One of the best times of the year is getting started. So I've got some recommendations for everybody who really needs to start thinking about what's happening for Thanksgiving this year, because so many of us will be all together. And of course, a old tradition, the Two Jacks Holiday Thanksgiving. It's back. You can go there for the longest time, 11 a.m. till 9 p.m., four courses, lots of choices, including the traditional turkey dinner. Uh, fabulous choice. Then, other big news is the Redfish Grill Buffet is back for Thanksgiving. Lots of people loved that. That's 11 till 5. And there's over 20 Thanksgiving menu items on that buffet, and there's a special kids menu. Now, for the uptown folks, Jack Rose at the Ponch Train Hotel is never a bad choice for Thanksgiving. They're serving 11 to 5. There's four courses there, too, that range from traditional turkey turkey to flounder or papillot. And for the Thanksgiving pie, I'll have the mile high pie. I don't know about <laughs> you. Uh -huh. And just like me, so many people I know love that Alex Harrell's delicious food. This is what's new this year, the Commons Club. Uh, Chef Harrell will be cooking three courses at the Virgin Hotel. That's going to be great. But if you don't want turkey necessarily, if you're looking for something totally new, go to Mr. Mao's. Make those reservations for a totally non-traditional three-course Thanksgiving. Everything from Balinese tuna tataki to pumpkin gnocchi and turkey tikka masala. That's probably the most uh, traditional sounding thing. And then, if you miss it for Thanksgiving because you're having something traditional and you've got the family in town, make reservations for a Thanksgiving brunch on the Sunday after Thanksgiving at Mr. Mouse. That's going to be a really exciting time, and the out-of-towners will be dazzled. That's a great idea. Thank you so much, Poppy. And on to Anwar. And, of course, the Louisiana Philharmonic Orchestra has kicked off its season. And uh, not only, of course, mainly at the Orpheum, but you all are also out and about through the year, aren't you? We're out and about. The LPO is back after almost 19 months away from our audiences oh. only being in a digital capacity. We are back in person. We we kicked off the season with two Music at the Museum programs at the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Center, and then we were back at the Orpheum last week. But going forward, we're going to be all around town. I think it's going to be a really fantastic season that we have ahead for us. There's so much great music, both from your traditional core orchestral repertoire, you know, featuring all of our beautiful musicians that live, eat, and breathe right here in New Orleans, mm 
and we're going to also welcome in some fabulous guest artists over the course of the year. Our music director, Carlos Miguel Prieto, is back in town and, and ready to lead the ensemble in, in some of the you know best music that has ever been written. Absolutely. And before we go any further, though, I had the great good fortune at attending um, an LPO concert on the Great Lawn at City Park a few weeks back. Let's take a look. And of course, that was their amazing tribute to West Side Story. And, you know, for folks who love all different kinds of music, while of course the focus is on classical music, not always, especially with the LPO, you've got a lot of variety, don't you? We do, we do. We feature everything from, like I said, the classics all the way up through music of today. We have some fantastic local musicians that we're going to be partnering with. One of them is Tank and the Bangas that will be here with us in January, as well as Sweet Crude has been with us in the past. And so there's so much great music. Music, you know, we're everything from Broadway to popular music. We have a little bit of something for everyone, especially our young families as well, with some of our family programming. So it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful place to, to celebrate together. Absolutely. When we come back to you, we're going to talk about some holiday uh, programming as well. Thank Indeed. you so much, Anwar. And over to Nick. And Nick, uh, my goodness, congratulations. Over 51 artists out and about citywide, you know, it, not just at museums, on uh, Creed Street in uh, Fallbrook, St. John. Um, give us the overview for folks who are not familiar with Prospect. Yeah, Prospect is uh, what's called a contemporary art triennial. And what that means is every three years, we invite artists to New Orleans from all over the world to make projects all throughout the city in venues, like you said, that are more traditional, like museums, and ones that are much less traditional, like a, uh, a now defunct former early 20th century silent cinema that is now a private residence. So it's, uh, it's a way to see New Orleans through the eyes of artists that is truly unique. Now, um, I, I would think this is quite a job because not only, of course, are the artists chosen, but then you have to figure out, uh, you know, where can we put their artworks and then get permission to do it if it's in, in the public view, correct? That's where the magic happens, is uh, <laughs> so much of this artwork is in places where you've never seen artwork before and would never expect to see art. And so um, I think that's when artists get really excited. And frankly, that's when I get really excited is when we can ask an artist to do something that he or she has never would have made before because they're engaging so specifically with New Orleans and because they're engaging so specifically with the venue at which we've placed them. Yes, and um, one in particular, the Oracle of Delphi, which I think we're going Delphi, we're going to show. That is an Esplanade in Crete, and um, Anastasia Peleus is the artist in that. What a great idea to do that, huh? And then Ron Bechet, of course, at the Newcomb Art Museum. So you do have a, a bit of the mix there. And um, in terms of most of these are, you know, in terms of being the access to them, unless you're at a museum, they're free to go and see. But to see a map is very important to find out where everything is located. So definitely go to the website uh, for that. The other thing is this is many years in planning, isn't it? Many years. In fact, we started dreaming up this show in 2018, and originally it was set to open in 2020, of course, and uh, had to be postponed. So we're four years in the making. This is the show that we've been thinking and dreaming and talking about for a long time, and it's really gratifying and exciting to see it finally actualized. Well, thank you, Nick, and we'll see more in just a bit, but now time to go over to Alan. Alan? Well, if there's one thing that gives us an indication that perhaps we're returning back to normalcy, or at least a semblance of it, is that the Hancock Whitney Banks 
Broadway Across New Orleans series has opened officially at the Sanger after 18 months of lockdown. And of course, to bring us out of our doldrums, none other than Drew Becker, who is the lead in Tootsie. That's the uh, film, of course, that starred Dustin Hoffman. In this case, Michael Dorsey is still an actor, only he's working on Broadway. Uh, Becker has an outstanding voice for the role of Michael Dorsey and his alter ego, Dorothy Michaels, who becomes an integral part of the musical Juliet's Curse. Well, Michael has a lazy roommate, Jeff, played by Jared David Michael Grant, and a neurotic ex-girlfriend you can see there, Sandy, played by Peyton Riley. Uh, they both ramp up the comedy elements in this David Yazbek musical with Tony Award-winning book by Robert Horn. Uh, Michael and Dorothy's love interest is Julie, who's played by Ashley Alexander, who has a very good voice for the role. And the comedy is really advanced also uh, by uh, the leading man in the musical, Max Van Horn, played by Lucas James Miller. Uh, the script's quite funny. Uh, and, and no, not all of the original film's one-liners are making it into that musical. The whole idea of a man, though, dressing as a woman has been used for comedy purposes a lot. On Broadway, of course, we had Where's Charlie, based on Charlie's aunt, and we have Mrs. Doubtfire about to open on Broadway. So I guess if you can agree with the premise and the political incorrectness of the work, you should be able to enjoy this musical. A lot of fun, but don't forget, bring your mask. Masking is being enforced, and not just for Mardi Gras. Meanwhile, Peggy, the radical buffoons have just one more show uh, for their play, no play, uh, at the Zoni Mash Beer Product Stage. Both shows, uh, that is one show only, is going to be on Sunday, and it'll start at 11 a.m. And uh, also, Peggy, guess what? It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. That's right, because first of all, we've got a couple of shows to talk about. Elf the Musical, being directed by Bryce Locum at Rivertown Theaters, will be opening on December the 3rd. Uh, we hope to have Bryce on our, our NOLA talk show, hopefully coming up soon. And uh, then for two nights, this always sells out Harry Shearer, and his lovely wife and talented wife, I might add, Judith Owens, they're going to be back bringing their hugely popular Christmas Without Tears show at Le Petit. It's a benefit for charity. Get tickets now because they always sell out. Check it out, Christmas Without Tears, with Harry Shearer, who is a New Orleanian by choice. Yes, he is, and that's a real tradition, too. By the way, just to back up about Zoni Mash, um, in terms of where it is, it's it's off uh, Broad. It's right near that water treatment um, uh, plant, too. So right there, Broad and, and Thalia. Thank and, you so and much. And the kids huh? do not get beer when they're there. That's understand right. that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, thank you, Alan. Back to Bobby. Bobby? Well, if you're like me and you prefer Thanksgiving at home, well, I've got some great ideas for you with that, too. Now, top of the list... Koshan Butcher. I would definitely like Steven Strajewski to cook for me and come to the house and carve it. They have a huge menu that includes smoked turkey, boudin stuffed turkey, even a whole hog. The menu has 14 sides. So you have to order by Sunday, November 21st. And of course, there's pies from La Boulangerie. Great idea if you don't want to cook but want to be at home. And another new idea, the commissary, which, of course, is the Dickie Brennan's next generation uh, on Orange Street in the Garden District near Chapatulas. They have 18 different items to pick from, including a complete dinner for 6 to 8 for $210. And check this out. They have an option that you can pick the dinner up hot on mm -hmm. Thanksgiving day between 8 a.m. and noon. And the traditional things they've got, just what you'd be cooking at home. Um, spinach madeleine, oyster or cornbread on dewy dressing. It's going to be delicious. And last of all, if you're really like me, well, go shop at the Crescent City Farmer's Market. So many of the vendors who were affected by Ida have crops in their back. I want to point out that that City Park Sunday Market is now strictly a walk-up from 8 until noon. Um, and on Thursdays at the Lafitte Greenway, that's from 3 until 7. That's where um, I took these pictures of a new vendor, Paella Nola. So you can go by on Thursdays and pick it up. But the place to be on the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, as always, is the Crescent City Farmer's Market uptown from 8 until noon noon. I'll see you there. Thank you so much, Poppy. And over back to uh, Anwar. Of course, your uh, upcoming schedule is pretty vast, so let's focus on the next few weeks and starting with the Eroica. 
Absolutely. So this, uh, many people say that this is Beethoven's greatest symphony, and I would personally agree. It's his third symphony, so well before he got to his fifth or his ninth, and it's being led by one of our guest conductors, Joseph Young, who is a fantastic up-and-coming conductor, and he's going to be leading the ensemble in this really, uh, like, it's called Beethoven's Eroic Symphony, and he's just really a dynamic person on the podium, so he's one that you definitely don't want to miss. But there's also going to be uh, something else by a living American composer. His name is Carlos Simon, and he's also going to be on the program. And this is Thursday, November 18th at 7.30 at the Orpheum. And we have tickets available at lpomusic.com, and I really hope to see you all there. I think it's going to be a really fantastic night. Now, I'm also really excited because you've got two holiday concerts coming we up. We do. We do. So there's two. There's the uh, traditional uh, classical Christmas that we have, but one thing that we're really excited about that actually comes first is our Holiday Spectacular that features many of our local New Orleans own singers. It's a, we're saying it's the, it's the women of New Orleans. You had Aurora Nealon, Mishaya Lake, and Arsene DeLay are really going to be our headliners on this program that I think is going to be really fantastic singing some of the greatest holiday music of all time. So they're going to they're gonna lead us through into the holiday season. That's on Friday, December 3rd at the Orpheum. Once again, I think it's going to be a really fantastic night, just really a time to get together and celebrate with your family, friends, and hopefully come in and make some new friends right along with us. Now tell me about the Frasier Singers. That's yeah, intriguing. Absolutely. So they're going to be singing the Messiah with us on the, on the Classical Christmas, and this is on Thursday, December 16th. You know, the Frasier Singers are a, a local uh, choir here that are going to be singing some of the, once again, your more traditional, you know, your, your straight-laced holiday classics that you know and love. Uh, so it's kind of a, a, a great contrast from what we would see with our, our Christmas Spectacular. So this one is one for the family but much more secular of nature. And you know, also, if you haven't been to the Orpheum lately, it is such an amazing <laughs> facility, and thankfully it was saved, and it's comfortable, and of Absolutely. course, the Roosevelt's right across the street, you can go have a Sazerac. Yeah, you, you know? can have a Sazerac, you can <laughs> check out the lights and the Christmas, delay, the Christmas display right there, so yeah. it's, a, it's a fantastic uh, time to just make it a night of it. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jim. Thank you. And back over to, to Nick, and we're going to see yet a few more of the over 50 different installations as well. <laughs> Yes, okay. So all around the town, right, Nick? <laughs> All around the town, and uh, you know, I think again, seeing seeing New Orleans through the eyes of artists is the theme. So what you're seeing here is some sh some shots of the the venues that have been opened recently. This is the Contemporary Arts Center, um, which is beautiful. This is George Darrow, a New Orleans-based photographer, now deceased, beloved New Orleans artist at the Historic New Orleans Collection. Surprising and beautiful installation of his work. I think a new lens on an artist that many of us know well. This is the uh, young Los Angeles artist Karan Davis, an amazing sculptor um, with with beautiful work at the Contemporary Art Center, kind of in in dialogue with an artist named Kiki Smith, a much older artist, but there are a lot of similarities in in the work there. Um, this this piece that you're seeing right here, I think, is one of the most uh, incredible pieces in the show. This is Elliot Hundley at the the Newcom Art Museum on Tulane's campus. This is an 80 foot long collage, incredibly detailed. Uh, it's sort of mind blowing that the piece even exists. Um, and, and this, uh, of course, is uh, uh, just a, a snapshot of a larger installation by the artist Josh Kuhn at the Historic New Orleans Collection based on some historical research that Josh has done for many years about the history of Mexican brass band musicians in New Orleans and how that uh, sort of led in a straight line to the, develop, the, the development of New Orleans jazz. Absolutely. The Mexican band at the 1884 World's Fair. Now, what I also like about Prospect 5 is that uh, in the last few months and in the coming months, you will have openings. And so this week you have an opening at the old, what we call the old airport, the Shushan Airport, correct? Yeah, that's right. This is one of my favorite venues, and it's a venue that Prospect has never been at before, the beautiful Lakefront Airport, which um, is, some people certainly know about. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know that everyone understands that this is an, an art deco gem right here in, in New Orleans, in a city not known for art deco architecture. So it's it's a really, really unique landscape in which to see art. And um, Jamila, the Miami-based artist Jamila Sabor uh, has an incredible video installation there. So once again, for all the details, you go to the Prospect website and you'll um, be able to learn the locations and the background um, of the different artists. And we should say it, it's really quite a combination because you have artists from really around the world as well as, of course, a, a healthy grouping of local artists, too. You really mix them up. 
all, all over the place. We have uh, 20% of our artists are from New Orleans, and uh, those artists are in dialogue with artists from Johannesburg, London, Los Angeles, Toronto, all over the world, really. And th this is what makes Prospect special is that kind of cross-cultural dialogue that happens. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Nick. And moving Thank back you. over to Alan. Well, I'm taking a leave from Anwar because uh, uh, De Valkyrie is about to happen uh, at the Mahalia Jackson Theater. And we wanted to talk a little bit about, about the premise of what it is. Pretty simple. A joint production of the Louisiana Philharmonic Orchestra and the New Orleans Opera Association. Basically, we have to talk about Sigmund, who is a hero who's exhausted. He finds refuge in an unknown house occupied by Siglinda, who's an, an, basically an unhappy happy marriage with her husband, Hunding. Uh, they have an immediate attraction, that is, Sigmund and Siglinda, uh, and her husband, who questions who this new man is in the house and is determined later on that uh, they're both, uh, basically enemies, Hunding tells Sigmunda, guess what? You've got, you've got to prepare for battle in the morning. We're going to battle it out to the death. And Sigmund girds himself for that duel. He asks his father for some help, and then it turns out that, guess what? Sigmund and Siglinda are really brother and sister. Thank you, Mr. Wagner, for that. The story <laughs> plays out with this other introduction of a sword that's been promised to Sigmund uh, for, uh, to vanquish his, uh, his enemies. Uh, Sigmunda drugs her, her husband and tells Sigmund about a wedding day and then talks about that sword. He finally finds that, and again, Sigmund gets his sword, but it doesn't really end well for that sword, as you'll find out. De Valkyr Act One plays twice this weekend, tomorrow night and Sunday. The opera always does a great job with Wagner, and the LPO, as you can see, uh, Carlo Prieto was, was there uh, conducting. It's going to be a wonderful opportunity for those who haven't seen it. De Valkyr Act One, you don't have to worry about seeing uh, Acts Two and Three, because it's just the one. And let me just point out that it is um, a a sort of a musical presentation. It's so it's not totally. With the, I, I wouldn't want somebody to go and say, "Well, where's all the sets?" It's a little bit more simply done this time. It's only about an hour, and then of course in the spring they're going to do a full-blown production of La Boheme and a tribute to Josephine Baker. But right. uh, but just don't be surprised. No, it's not three hours. And they have a gala <laughs> okay. that's coming up as well for the opera. Yeah, Association. they have a lot of activities, yeah. which is great. But anyway, moving on. All right. Well, let me let me that. mention that that Seth Rudeski has an interesting guest this week as Catherine Gallagher. And you may not know who she is, but she is the daughter, and you can look at her face and those eyebrows, of Peter Gallagher, the, the famous actor, oh, sure. uh, if you remember, on the 20th century recently with Kristen Chenoweth. Yep. Uh, and, of course, next week we get treated to Andrea Burns, who's about to be seen in the remake of West Side Story at theaters nationwide. And that's the West Side Story, by the way, Anwar, that left out I Feel Pretty. So uh, <laughs> check it all out at the SethConcertSeries.com. That's where you can get tickets. And uh, we'll, we'll tell you uh, about some other great Great people who are coming up uh, on this show uh, uh, in the next few weeks, too. Okay. Well, Peter Gallagher also, what, early breakout movie with Sex, Lies, and Videotape, too. Yeah, he's been, a, he's been around. He definitely. Yeah. Th thank you, Alan. And now time for our Picks of the Week. Miss Poppy. Oh, big thanks to Judy Walker for this beautiful article in the paper today about the Mandina's new cookbook. Of course, that's in Tony Mandina's kitchen. Colette, my co-author, and I will be at Dorignac's on Saturday from 11 till 2 signing copies. You better come get one if you're given it for Christmas because it was a limited first edition. Mm -hmm. And it's gorgeous. We Thank you, that. darling. <laughs> yes. And what? <laughs> Absolutely. So the LPO Radio Hour is back. For those of you who can't make it to the Orpheum or want to hear some of your favorite concerts again, you can tune in on Thursdays at 11 a.m. or on Sunday at 6 p.m. to 104.9 Classical WWNO to hear some of your favorite artists on stage uh, live from the Orpheum. And it's a really a wonderful thing to just relive uh, some of those wonderful experiences. And they're hosted by our new uh, guest conductor, Chelsea Gallo. So I think that it's a really fantastic opportunity just to extend your experience and and hear it from you know your car, your office, your home, wherever you might be. That is a really good idea. A really good idea. I'm so glad. Thank you. And moving over to Nick. Very hard to pick one when I'm choosing between 51 artists and 15 venues all across the city. But I think my pick of the week is the beautiful Glenn Ligon installation at the Ogden Museum of Southern Art, specifically in the Ogden Library. Uh, which is generally closed to the public. Um, but this is the first time that we've been able to secure it as a prospect venue. And Glenn created an amazing installation of beautiful neon light sculptures uh, hung very, very high in a, a beautiful, architecturally beautiful environment. 
um, in conversation with uh, an also very beautiful sound piece by the artist Jenny C. Jones. It's um, it's ethereal, it's gorgeous, and it's one of my favorite moments of Prospect Five. Thank you. I know it's hard to pick. It's it's really that's kind of, I hate to press you with that because it's really it is hard to pick. And then moving over to Alan. Peggy, it's back. The Southeast Louisiana Council of the Boy Scouts of America has their annual Ten Commandments hike, which I lead. And there you see me back uh, in the day carrying the kudu horn or the shofar. Uh, that's what I lead the hike with. It's open to everybody, not just Boy Scouts, not just Girl Scouts. Anybody can participate. It's $10. Now we go to 10 different houses of worship and hear about the 10 different commandments from the different uh, leaders of the churches and the synagogues. And $12 after November the 16th goes rain or shine. Check it out. I'll hopefully see you there and see you at the theater. All right. Thank you. And now my picks, bid high and bid often on WYS's online auction. Among the items is this Savarsky pearl and sterling necklace. Look at the little ivy. I'm actually wearing it. It was created uh, by Dorian Artisan Metalworks. It's gorgeous. It really is so pretty. Go to WYES.org for all the information. Bidding closes the night of the WYES Worlds of Hemingway Gala, November 19th at 10 o'clock. So there's a lot of great stuff. There's an Alvin Kamara St. Jersey, a Drew Brees autographed football, a Kentucky Bourbon Trail tour and an Abbey Road album signed by Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr, plus lots of other stuff, too. Go to WYS.org and click on Worlds of Hemingway Auction. Yes. On Friday, this Friday, an exhibit of artists who paint outdoors in plein air. It opens with a reception 5 p.m. The exhibit is open both Saturday and Sunday as well at the Abita Springs Trailhead Museum. Peg Usner, one of my favorite artists, she's one of the artists featured, along with Phil Sandusky and many others. Also on the North Shore, it's busy in the North Shore this weekend, Downtown Covington hosts the Three Rivers Arts Festival. Carol Halleck is one of many artists featured. That's both Saturday and Sunday. The Words and Music Literary Festival is this year a virtual series of literary panels on a variety of topics. November 17th through 20th, it's free. Go to wordsandmusic.org. And then also we've got the MS Rao Antiques. Look at Oh, the Piety and Market Exile. How could I forget that? My goodness, excuse me. That's on Saturday from 11 to 4. That's at St. Claude right there in Spain Street. So much fun. There are plants. There's vintage costumes, lots of food and live music. A whole lot of fun. Now, MS Royal Antiques at 630 Royal is opening a new jewelry boutique. And they're gonna have tours on Friday and Saturday. And there's even a pin uh, on view that was owned by the Duchess of Windsor. And speaking of jewelry, uh, on Saturday on the Great Lawn at City Park, there's that arts market. It's put on by the Arts Council and um, Matrice McMurray's gonna be there with her lovely jewelry. So thank you all so very much. <laughs> Lots of stuff this weekend. And thank you for watching. Good night. Stepping Out is made possible in part by Susie and Pierre G. Villery. With a lifetime of passion for public television, we're pleased to help underwrite Stepping Out. Please join us in supporting WYES TV. Rouse's is proud of the creativity and the unparalleled entertainment in New Orleans and honored to highlight it with their sponsorship of Stepping Out on WYES. <laughs> 